So today we are going to be talking about The Winners by Frederick Bachman. My initial plan was to talk about Bear Town, the trilogy, in this video, uh, but I got a couple comments of people saying just focus on the winners. Uh, so I'll still talk about the series as a whole, the wider context, but the story is going to be mostly about the winners, which makes sense because it's it's the new book. I also had one or two comments um, asking for a dedicated video for each of the books in the trilogy. I'm not going to do that, though. So just the winners it'll be. Not because I don't want to, just because I reread Beartown and Us Against You in preparation for the winners, and I didn't take notes as if I were going to do a review for them. So I, you know, it just is what it is. But what I did do is I went on my community tab on the second channel um, asking what y'all wanted to talk about because the, the winners did a lot. It's, it was a book that did a lot. So just asking what you want to focus on in this review. So I will be doing that. I'll be doing what, what y'all uh, suggested. I'll start with overall thoughts, I guess, on the book. Um, and then we'll get into that. So this is going to be a spoiler discussion about the winners. I do have a spoiler free section about the winners on the on one of my reading vlogs. So I'll link that vlog in the description of this video if you want a spoiler free, spo in my spoiler free thoughts. <laughs> but this is going to be spoilers. So overall thoughts on this book, I'm so pleased to have a conclusion and I do think that it was overall a very, very satisfying one. Um, this series talks about a lot of characters. There's so many characters that are set up in book one and then we add more in book two and then we add more in book three. So there's so many things that Bachman is doing and it's not just, I always describe Bear Town as a small town hockey town uh, about a girl who was raped by a hockey character, a hockey player, and it's the town's reaction. It's the way everybody responds, some good, some bad. And you know, it just, it, I always describe it that way, but that's such a simplistic way to describe the series because it does so much. It talks about relationships and family. Um, it talks about growing up and be like what being a man actually looks like. It talks a lot about where things begin, like this locker room talk and uh, the 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 concepts of like boys will be boys and, and these things that we just kind of write off and we're like, ah, eh, it's just the way it is. But like permitting that kind of stuff is, is the building blocks of things just escalating and uh, idealizing these people and letting them get away with things. But then also like false perceptions of characters like Benji, who is treated as the problem child, but really he's the most genuine, kind-hearted character in the series. Uh, we talk about prejudices and, and assumptions made by people, abuse, trauma, outing people, losing children. I mean, Bachman covers so much in this series. While there is one main conflict that starts it and that everything co comes from, there's so much that's happening in this series and so many POVs that we're balancing. And Bachman in the winners seem to really want to give every character a conclusion, which makes sense it would be unsatisfying to set up a whole storyline with someone and then just like never get a conclusion on them. But because the series went out so wide, that meant we had a lot of conclusions. And I think he did a really good job with it. I think that most of the conclusions were really satisfying and most of the topics of conversation that he tackled, I think he handled really, really well. We do have books that are like normal sized literary fiction books. And then we have a fantasy size <laughs> literary fiction to conclude it, which I get because he tried to do so much in this series. And so wrapping it all up took a lot of words, but I do think that this book was a little bit bloated and we, we'll, we'll talk about all that. But as as a general discussion about, about the story, I was really satisfied with the winners. I was especially satisfied with Benji's conclusion, which we're gonna talk about because I've read some of these topics of discussion that were brought up. So we'll talk about that. I have some complaints in my and some nitpicks and we'll get into that too. But overall, I was really happy with this conclusion. I, I, even though there are parts of the book that I felt I would have preferred to have more condensed, I never really wanted to stop reading it. Um, and yeah, it was, it was a great story. 
I do think that this could have been a standalone though. I think that the, the story was told here. Um, so the way I view it as this didn't have to be a trilogy, it got to be. And because I'm such a fan of the trilogy, I was thrilled to read all these books. But for anyone that feels unsure about continuing after the first book, it's fine. The first book is perfectly fine as a standalone. Going into, you know, I asked you guys what you wanted to talk about in, in this video and going into some of these, these comments, we'll start with Megan. A few things I would be interested in you discussing. I found the corruption slash Levi plot lines from book three to be a plot line that I felt didn't add anything to the story much. Have I missed some of the nuances and important plot that connects them thematically to others? So the Lev plotline with Amit was, I, I think it was good to explore Amit. A, a big thing that Bachman does in the series is he's really, really focused on people and on representing human emotions and human struggles in a really authentic way, but providing a thread of hope throughout it and uh, answers into how to move forward in our lives and how to conduct ourselves better in the future. Um, and Amit was a really fascinating character from book one being such a genuinely, genuine and pure character being exposed firsthand to the corruption of people, his idols being torn down and then having to work himself up to doing the right thing, to standing up for Maya and then not having that paid back in the way that you would expect, you know, not having justice brought to Maya in the way he had hoped. And then escalating to a star, breaking down physically and mentally, and then trusting the wrong people and, you know, really showing, I think that Amit's perspective, Amit's storyline, was one that I found really satisfying. I hated Lev and everything he did, but I think it was a it was good for the sake of showing that side of ho hockey and showing that side of fame, people taking advantage of you and people treating you poorly. And even Lev got kind of a a better ending than I and than I really felt he deserved. But I, I also appreciate that even somebody who does terrible things and takes advantage of people is capable of having a decent, like they can turn around, they can make better choices, they can see that they've done wrong and try to do better. So while I don't, I don't feel like I was very invested in Lev as a character or that plot line. I wasn't as invested in it as some others. Um, I still, I appreciated it, but I do understand feeling like, why are, why are we doing this? Now, as far as the corruption, do you mean all the stuff that happened with Peter and the hockey system corruption? Cause my golly, that was a mess, wasn't it? <laughs> that's a little bit too harsh. That was just, it was just a lot. That was one of the parts of the book that I felt was really, really bloated. Like the corruption within the hockey system and the fact that um, Tails had made such a mess of everything. And then they brought um, Kira, they brought Kira in or Kara, I don't know how to say her name. They brought her in to like, look at all the legal issues and to fight for them. And like that whole, so here's the problem for me is I felt like Bachman needed everybody to have a satisfying arc, not just in the story, but in this book as well. And I felt like Peter and Kira's plotline was good um, dealing with the loss of their child, uh, their their first son Enoch, I think his name was, dealing with the loss of him and dealing with the extreme pain of what was what Maya was going through and trying to figure out how to be there for her and how to deal with all the issues with the town and work, um, their marital issues, and then uh, their son slipping through the cracks of everything else that was going on. Like I thought all of that was really really great, but in book three it was kind of just nonstop two people not talking to each other ever. And then also this complete mess that didn't really feel like it was foreshadowed in the other two books. It kind of just felt inserted into this book, which I guess you could justify by saying like, yeah, it wasn't foreshadowed because 
Nobody knew about it, I guess, but it just, it felt like it was inserted into this book just to add drama for their characters so that they could also have something to work through in this book. And it took up so much page time and it was the least interesting part of the book for me. So I just wanted, I wanted their, that, that whole plot line to be just heavily, heavily condensed. And in fact, I, it could have been removed from the story and I think the story would have been mostly the same. And maybe we could have just had them like, continuing to work through family issues, but not so much page time devoted to it, they still could have had a satisfying arc. They still could have saved their marriage, worked through their issues, learned to communicate with one another. But even at the end of The Winners, I still felt like they never really started communicating that much. So like, they're probably gonna continue to have problems, honestly. I don't know, that part, that was one of my big issues with The Winners is there was so much page time devoted to this corruption in the hockey community, which sure, fair, but also <laughs> did it need to be so much? Benji, I found his ending to be fine, but given it had sort of built up since the last chapter in book one and book three was clearly leading up to it throughout the whole story, I was ultimately underwhelmed. And once again, it didn't seem to work for me within the bigger story themes. What were your thoughts? Um, I loved Benji's storyline. I loved where he landed. So I agree. It was from the very last chapter of book one. It was built up that Benji was going to die. He said somebody's going to die. And then of the options he gave, it was obvious that it had to be Benji. So I was in denial from the end of book one, all throughout book two, leading up to book three, I was in denial. And I was like, sometimes Bachman lies. Sometimes Bachman in his stories, I don't know how much Bachman you've read, so I'm not going to spoil you on anything. But sometimes Bachman in his stories intentionally misleads the reader so that you're led to believe something. And then at the end, the reveal is, ha ha, tricked you. I didn't technically say that thing. I just led you to believe it. So ha ha. And it's like one of my least favorite things that he does as a writer. He doesn't do it too often, but when he does, I hold a grudge. So I kept telling myself, Bachman just lied. <laughs> Benji's not dying, because Benji's my favorite character. So don't kill him. Um, but he did. And book one began with, with the opening was, Benji's gonna die, guys. I mean, chapter one was Benji's gonna, here, I'll read it to you. But the truth is that stories about boys like Benji hardly ever end with them as old men. They don't get long stories and they don't die peacefully in old people's homes with their heads resting on soft pillows. Boys like Benji die young, they die violently. That is such a rude way to open your book. So at the beginning of The Winners, I accepted, okay, Benji's gonna die. And I didn't appreciate <laughs> the idea that boys like Benji die young and die violently because Benji's wonderful. But then we also open the book seeing Benji has in this two year time jump, he's not been in the best place and he's struggling. And seeing him come back into the town and everybody being so excited to see him. I mean, everybody, Maya, Anna, all the boys on the hockey team, everybody was like, it's Benji, like he got the welcoming that he deserved in this book. And that made me so happy. So the build up to his plot line, to what was going to happen to him, I accepted that he was gonna die. I was really sad about it. I was pretty mad about it because I love him and I just wanna protect him. I wanted to remove him from this plot so that he could stay safe and live happily. Um, but I actually loved the way it was done because Bachman set my expectations in that first chapter that he was going to have a really tragic end. And his ending was still tragic because he died, but he died nobly. He died protecting people. He died coming back into town, being accepted for who he is as a person, being loved authentically, not having to keep secrets anymore and still being loved 100%. And he was an icon and a hero to people and a friend to people. And he had built a life or he was, he was set up to be able to build a life there again if he wanted to or to move on and find a life for himself somewhere else. And it was, I appreciated that his early and violent ending was because he's the type of person that runs into fire. Shoot. The whole buildup with that couple that, you know, the, the midwife and the, he was a fireman, right? The whole buildup 
talking about how they're the type of people that run into fire and they're the type of people that give their lives to protect people and like all that and then that being tied into the type of person that Benji is and him giving him being given such a noble end of like he's the type of guy that protects he's the type of guy that doesn't get to live a full life because he lives his life making sure that other people are safe, which is exactly what he was in book one to Kevin. And then he left Kevin because Kevin proved himself to be a bad person. He proved himself to have done horrible things and Benji was not going to stand by his friend for that. And then losing himself and then finding himself again and finding his friends again, and then dying, being the kind of man that runs into fire to save people. Like, I knew, I understand. I totally respect where you're coming from. I understand why being outright told this character's gonna die at the end could make their death feel unsatisfying. But for me, because it felt like he was going to have a tragic end, but instead he got a noble end, it was like, he, that's, he deserves that, you know? Like, he, de he deserves to have how good of a person he is recognized. Oh boy, we're gonna, it's gonna take a minute to get through all this because there's not even that many comments on this community post. There's not even that many people saying, I wanna talk about this, but look at me not being able to stop. I'm not even done with the first comment because there's more here. Your favorite and least favorite characters and storyline. Benji's my favorite character, but also Bobo. Bobo, the kid who's making stupid, sexist, gross, nasty jokes in the locker room in book one to try to fit in, or was it book two that he was, it's all kind of fuzzy for me. This character who's trying so hard to fit in and is willing to do anything to get a laugh for people, making pirouettes on, on, the, on the ice rink to make fun of their female hockey coach and running out and and streaking in front of her to get a laugh from the guys, which by the way, she handled that amazingly. Like he, he was not likable, but I loved him so much in book three. He grew up and learned and became a true man, you know? And, and I loved how much Bachman really focused on, um, what the idea of what it looks like to be a man and then what it really looks like to be a man. And the, the little relationship that he developed in book three, his devotion to her, his love for her, um, the scene when after his mom died and the boys on the team were like, what's your mom's name? And they wrote her name on their, it was like a cloth that they tied around their wrists or something like that. Sorry, I read this book several weeks ago. Um, it, it, all of it, all of it, everything around Bobo, he had such a satisfying arc. And I'm just, he's another one that just needs to, he just needs a happy ending, just make him happy. Um, least favorite, I'll, I'll also say one thing that, so one of my complaints about book three is that I think he added too much, which in book one, it was already really wide cast. It's already, it's already gone out really wide. And then book two, we go even wider. We add more characters, we look at more people. And then book three, we go even wider to the point that it's like, okay, we've gone too wide now. And adding in characters from Hid and everything that they're going through and the, how unfair it feels, them against Beartown and all that kind of stuff was interesting, but was it needed? I don't know, the politician stuff. It was interesting and I appreciated his commentary on how corrupt the system is, but was it needed? I don't know. Now, one storyline that was added that I thought was really impactful was Ruth. Um, seeing that Maya's story, even though she didn't get justice the way she should have, she still got support and she still got love, um, but she isn't the norm that she's the standout case, that there are so many girls who go through this, people that go through this that are never heard, that never get any form of justice, that are never supported. Um, and Ruth's story was so, so heartbreaking. And I really appreciated Bachman tackling that side of this discussion as well and tackling um, the ways that people respond even more. There's a lot that he did, a lot of conversations that he started around Ruth's storyline that I think were really important. Even Ruth's storyline, I probably would have said, I say could have been condensed a little bit, um, but 
regardless the conversations he had around her, I think were really, really important. And I'm glad that he included that as well. I'm not going to talk about it in depth because honestly, Ruth's story was even more triggering for me than Maya's. So I don't want to talk about it, but I think it was important and I'm glad that he chose to get there, to, to, to do that too. Least favorites? Well, I already talked about Peter and um, Maya. I just didn't like their plot line in this book. I just, I just didn't. Obviously Maya and Anna, I really liked where they landed. I enjoyed their conclusion, seeing them go in opposite directions, but always staying anchored to each other, building their own lives, but still staying connected. I thought that was really beautiful. I don't know, I'm sure I'm forgetting people. I'm going off of no notes in this review. We're just chatting, we're just off the cuff. I'm looking at what you wanna talk about and we're talking, so it's not super structured. I'll come, maybe I'll come back to this if I remember something else that I, didn't love, but I think there are several plot lines that were smaller parts of the stories that, that I just feel like, just cut it out. Just, we didn't need it. We didn't need that part. We didn't need that one. Um, I guess with me not liking the whole hockey team corruption, Peter signed papers he shouldn't have signed, blah. With that also, the reporters and bringing in the old man who talks to Maya on the train and like gets information out of her and then he's trying to uncover, like I just didn't need all of that. I see what Bachman was trying to do and I think he did fine. I just think for what this story was, it just went wider than it needed to go. Max O'Callaghan asked, who are your favorite and least favorite characters to follow? And did you like the direction their stories went in? I basically already answered this. Favorite is Benji always, but also Bobo, Amit. Maya, Anna, I mean, I had a lot of favorites. And then least favorites, I won't keep harping on, on all that. Oh, you know what? Another one that really, really surprised me that I did not expect to love is someone to, to, to shoot, I'm not gonna remember his name. The black jacket that was close with shucks. I should have recorded this video right after reading the book, not after I've read like 10 books between it. The black jacket character, that ended up when when um, the bar owner, why have I forgotten her name now? The bar owner when she dies and he takes her body and puts it in a car because he didn't want to leave her alone and he called Peter because he didn't know who to call. And then Peter was like, okay, I'll come, I'll come to you, I'll come get you. And then he he was like, oh, no adult has ever come to get me, like him? never expected to love him. He's another character that it's like, okay, I don't agree with a lot of what you're doing. I don't agree with very many choices you've made in life, but his loyalty to the rest of the Black Jackets, his loyalty to then Peter, whenever he and Peter develop a relationship, that scene when he like, it's like grease. He like snaps his, I don't think he even snaps his fingers, but in my mind he snaps his fingers and then the other black jacket puts a bouquet of flowers in his hand and then he hands it to Peter and he's like, for your wife. Thanks for, thanks that she's helping us. And it's just like, this guy, this guy. Anyway, um, him, I love him. His loyalty, his devotion, his, his him wanting to protect the people that he considers his own. There's so much that I don't agree with the Black Jackets, but I've grown to love them as people too. And Bachman's really good at that, at writing just very flawed characters, but writing them in such a human way that it's like, oh, but I do love you. I don't agree with you, but I do love you. Anyway, I like the ending of Bear Town, the first book, because Maya is not just a survivor, but she's uh, she triumphs at the end. I really like that. Um, yes, I'm very happy with Maya's story in book three. I love her uh, devoting songs to Benji and saying that every song is really, really for him. Um, I thought that was really, really beautiful. And I liked that Bachman didn't make her all better in book three. Um, like we still have scenes like when she's walking in the park and that young girl, uh, tries to follow Maya to get protection from her. She's like trying to find solace in an adult because of these girls that are after her. And Maya pulls a knife on her because she is so terrified because she's learned to be terrified. And not just that, um, the way she kind of doesn't open up to her college friends and never gets drunk at parties and like these, those little pieces of trauma that she holds and that shape a lot of the decisions that she makes and that she's never, she's never going to stop uh, 
being changed by what's happened to her, but we do see her starting to heal and starting to be able to move forward. And I think he just handles her journey really, really well. I think you mentioned that the winters didn't need to be such, needed, didn't need to be as long as it did. What parts of the book do you think could have been shortened or omitted? I mean, I think that it's pretty repetitive too. The beginning of the winners is very much like, here's a character, remember what happened with them? Let me tell ya! Like, it's ca characters sitting down together and saying, remember that one very specific thing that happened in another book? Let's talk about it real quick. Like, it was very, um, recappy at the beginning and some scenes were really repetitive throughout the book. Um, I think just in general, it could have used a heavier editing hand. I think as far as like the recapping was pretty intense and then the build up to certain scenes was pretty intense. Even the hinting, Bachman's really, he does a lot of like, something's happening, something's about to happen, end of the chapter, we don't know what happened. And like the leading stuff, it just seemed like it was on overdrive in this book to the point that I was like, say something, man. You know, in the beginning, I was just like, say something. Don't, you keep, you keep saying something's going to happen without actually saying anything. Say something. I don't know, there's a lot of like, there's a lot of stuff about Bachman that I absolutely love. And and I mean, he's, he's my favorite author. He's still my favorite author. That hasn't changed. Even though I have critiques about this book, that still hasn't changed. But I think that this could have used, I, 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 it could be shortened. Their plot lines could be condensed. Certain things just felt bloated. Oh, how funny, okay. Maybe your thoughts on how Bachman writes in such a way that you assume one thing is going on, but as you get more details later on, you realize you assumed wrong, which actually could be a metaphor for how we as a society do that. We get one piece of the puzzle and automatically start filling in the gaps and we're wrong often. That's the thing I love about, I love most about his writing. I'll read a line that's, and start reacting based on what I think is happening and then later find out I'm completely wrong. He does this phenomenally. I just kind of talked about him kind of over, being overly vague in the beginning of this book, leading us to think something but never actually saying anything in the beginning of this book and I whined about that and I'm sorry. But this is something that he's phenomenal at. He's really good at knowing what kind of expectations people have and playing off of that. He's really good at building things up and saying something in a way that will lead us to feel a certain way and then completely switching it on us. And I really appreciate that because I think that him doing that exposes a lot of our own internal biases or expectations um, where like he'll start to say something and I'll get mad and I'm like, excuse me, what are you about to say? And then he'll switch it on me and I'm like, oh, <laughs> you know what I mean? And it, it, he does a great job of really understanding the human mind, understanding how people feel and how people think and confronting that in those really, really subtle ways just in his writing tics. And I think that that's a really unique skill that he has. So um, a lot of these questions are things that are kind of, I don't wanna to get too repetitive. So I think I asked the main questions in that thread. I answered the main questions in that thread. And this video has already been kind of long. So I guess I'll leave it there. I'm really, really happy with this book. Um, we could have gone on even longer because there's so many different storylines that are played out. I do wanna talk really quickly about Suna though. I just said I'm gonna end it, but I do wanna talk really quickly about Suna because I love his character and he is a character that probably could be removed from the series and it would be fine, but I'm glad he's there. And I really appreciated uh, like the role of Benji's sisters and when Suna gets the puppy and raises it up and then he takes in the little girl and, and he's a really important part of her life. And oh my golly, there's so many small characters that don't play a massive huge role in the story, but play their own little role. And I think Bachman, he's just a really reflective writer. He's just a character that likes to write about people and to write about the conditions of the mind and write about just the the humanity within us all. And his stories are that at the core. So there's so many characters that on a technical level, do they have to be in the story? No, but what his stories do is it digs into humanity and digs into what people go through, how it shapes them, and how we can be kind to them 
because everybody's going through something and how we can move forward and do better as people, as individuals, and as a group. And I don't mind reading a book that's a little bit bloated by Bachman because he always has something he wants to talk about and nine times out of 10, I love the way he talks about it. He does, he has a very unique ability to understand people and to have a whole bunch of compassion for people and really try to discuss very sensitive, very difficult issues, discuss them with an extreme amount of nuance, but also discuss them in a really raw, honest way and still give us hope and still give us feeling like we can move forward and do better as individuals and as a group, which I think is just like, a, it's just a really amazing thing about him. And it's why I love his book so much. He writes interesting stories, but what he, what he really writes is interesting conversations within those stories. And I, I typically really appreciate the conversations that he has. So anyway, Time for you to talk. What do you think? How do you feel? What What did you think of the winners? What did you think of Barrett Town as a whole? Were you happy with the conclusion? Were there any storylines that you didn't like how they ended? Were there any storylines that you absolutely loved how they ended? Honestly, we could go on for a lot longer because the series and even just this book does so, so much and there's so, so many characters so many different plot lines going at once. So feel free to continue talking. Let me know what you wanna talk about that wasn't covered in this video. I post videos every Tuesday and Thursday on this channel, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on the main channel. I'll see you again soon, bye.